this is a feat that my family's been famous for, or made famous as a chair. Many people have done it, but it uh, seems like we've got the credit for doing it. The lady would be on a chair just the way you see me now. And at a certain point, they'd stop in the middle. And as soon as this wind gives me a little break, she would stand up just like that. Hopefully, they wouldn't have the wind like this. Meet Tino Walenda Zope, a great high wire performer in his own right, whose circus family spans six generations. His mother was the daughter of the great late Carl Walenda. His father was one of the premier bareback riders in the world. Their acts can be traced back to Italy as early as 1842. How did the great Walendas become known as the Flying Walendas? We were performing, and I say we, I, that was back in the 30s, performing somewhere in the Midwest. And there was an upset on the wire. They were doing a four-person pyramid on bicycles involving a chair at the time. And everything came down. The four performers went to the wire and clung to the wire. Now, there was a report in the audience. He went home, wrote a story, and in the story he said, the Walendas fell so gracefully, it looked as if they were flying. The banner headline was the Flying Walendas. And it stuck all these years. Tino, his wife Olinka, and their 15-year-old daughter Alita brought their circus to the grounds of the New Covenant Tabernacle in the town of Tonawanda in the summer of 1989. It was called Circus Maranatha, which means... It's a word that we, uh, we took directly out of, uh, out of the Bible, and it simply means that the Lord is coming. And so our show, we perform uh, strictly for religious organizations, so there is the tie-in right there. Uh, interesting enough, I have my father who's performing for me here. Uh, uh, he, his, my stepbrother uh, is a very good bareback rider, so they're bareback riding. Uh, uh, they do a comedy act where they have people come out of the audience and attempt to train him. He has trained uh, on Circus of the Stars. Uh, at the age of seven, by this time, my mother had uh, rejoined her father, Carl Walenda, and the, the High Wire troupe. And they, my grandfather, put me on a wire two feet off the ground, put the balancing pole on my hand. At the age of 12, I made my first appearance 35 feet in the air. 17, uh, I decided to become part of the family act, the Great Walendas, or the Flying Walendas, whichever you wish. Mm -hmm. And when I was married in 73, my wife and I decided we'd strike out on our own and begin to develop our own uh, troupe, which we have built with four children. <laughs> You come from a few generations of uh, circus people, too. Who yes, are I your do. parents? Well, my parents were all from Czechoslovakia, and uh, my mother's out of seven children, and they had their own little show, so they did just about everything. And my father's background's also from the circus. His mother was a performer. Later on, they went into uh, marionettes and acting and uh, also rides. How did you get into the High Wire Act? My grandmother's from a High Wire forming family, and my mother did all kinds of aerial things. And so when Tino and I met, I already had my own act, which my parents trained me for. I do head balancing and trapeze and upside down walk. So we just combined our talents. Do you foresee the day when all of your children will be doing the High Wire Act? I don't know. Do you encourage them? <laughs> um, I want to encourage them in whatever they want to do. And uh, I think when they watch mom and dad doing it, they, they want to do it. Is it in the blood? I think it's in the practice more than anything. I think the desire for performing might come down in the blood, but there is no talent inherited. <laughs> when was the first time you went up there, Elisa? First time I went up, I was eight years old. Mm. And all I did, my dad walked across the wire with me on his shoulders, and we stood in the middle and took a bow. How about schooling? You get tutoring and stuff like that? Well, um, our, our home church has a school, and we've been going to that school when we're on the, at home. And then when we're on the road, we take the books, and my mother would tutor me. But I've graduated from that school, and so right now I'm taking correspondence courses. Tina, you have t had tragedy you know, in your family uh, over the past few decades. Uh, did you ever discuss it or think about it? It's something that you continually have to think about, uh, and the reason why. Um, we've, I, for myself, I've determined what I felt was the problems in Detroit when the seven-person pyramid collapsed. And, uh, of course, when my grandfather fell in 1978 to his death, uh, one of the fortunate things there was that they had that videoed. And seeing the video, we could determine that there was a problem with the equipment mm. that uh, resulted in his fall. 
uh, it's hard to say that that encouraged us to keep going, but at least we knew what the reason was. It, it was very hard to get back on the wire. No nets, no safety devices, why? The, there's a lot of uh, illusion that goes along with a safety net. Uh, a safety net is only good if it will do what its purpose is, is there for. And you have to land properly. Uh, in my lifetime, I've known of at least two people who have fallen into nets and because they fell improperly, uh, broke their necks and were killed. I've known others that have missed a net. Uh, I've known others that have been seriously injured. And th the really, the, the biggest problem with the net is it gives you a false sense of security. Do you have any fear when you're up there? Ordinarily not. Uh, after 32 years of training, and it's a process that continues, it never ends. I will never be the, quotes, perfect tightrope walker. I will always be learning. So uh, that is one of the attitudes that you have to have, and, and I think that helps to prevent uh, anything from happening. When it's windy or rainy, it's, you be a little more cautious, but it's not really a matter of being afraid. No fear? Usually not at all, because we feel very, it's a controlled atmosphere and we feel that uh, we have practice and we have faith in God who will keep us up there. And uh, it's a very relaxed and a very enjoyable. How will Tina know when it's time to quit? Good question. Uh, I'm going to have to trust my senses. I'm going to have to trust uh, the God that gave me these talents to tell me when to quit. I do realize that there will be a time that I have to start cutting back and slowing down. But my grandfather was 73 when he fell to his death. And the only reason that he's probably not performing today at, in his 80s is because uh, the problem with the wire and not any problem with his age. So I anticipate that I can be walking the tightrope in my 70s, maybe in my 80s.